uh, product. This is a domain that usually deals with whatever your organization sells or whatever product or service your organization sells. What are those specific things that set your organization apart and gives it, give it competitive advantage? You want to create services in each one of these domains. And then, you know, IT, really technology-focused services such as caching, security. Uh, but again, what do you want to do? You want to separate your services as you're designing them into these very distinct domains that align to business units. Um, there's such a thing as atomic services, right? These are really the final level of granularity, you know, th such things as account or customer, you know, and composite services, such as serv you know, processes that are exposed as services. Um, service discovery, right? So this is always, whenever you kind of tackle it with an organization, it's always a challenging process. You know, a business units or IT people will, will kind of argue about what a service is, you know, what are the concepts that should be in there. Uh, this is something that needs to happen. Usually a good rule of thumb is to use major business concepts, which everybody knows about, you know, you kind of your own business, as the first services that you will develop. Um, here's another interesting thing. Combined request reply services with events. Uh, everybody knows that services are kind of a, this request reply entity, which you ask for information or ask for processing and you get something back. This is called a request reply service. Again, account service, a very good example. But not a lot of people implement events uh, in, in conjunction with these request reply services. This is essentially a count change event wh where, you know, this is a push interaction. It's a, it's a notification that something happened with this particular entity. So whenever you're developing services, you have to develop events in conjunction with the request reply uh, services. Uh, more than 15 major services is way too much. I mean, the granularity of the services has to, you know, services have to be coarse grain. If you're developing you know, 55, 60 services, this is way, way too much. You did not get coarse grain enough in your discovery process. I mean, most businesses end up having, you know, maybe 15 major services. Not everything becomes a service. Not every concept becomes a service. Again, we want to address the major business value first. Here's a very quick example, right? So uh, here's, here are the services basically broken up into domain. We have finance domain customer management domain, product domain, and you see, and technology domain. So these are the services that were developed in this particular case. You see the very few, very coarse grain, and you know, they pretty much were developed iteratively. So that's a very good uh, kind of uh, way to depict this. Um, the other major component, message-oriented middleware. This is your messaging engines. Uh, often forgotten part of uh, service-oriented architecture. Sometimes you look at it as plumbing, but it's actually a first-class citizen as far as implementation goes. It's responsible for reliable messaging delivery. It's really the backbone of your service-oriented architecture. This is how your data flows. You want to make sure that uh, you know, it's well set up, it's taken care of. There are skill sets in your organizations that address messaging. Uh, it facilitates pop sub and point-to-point -point messaging styles, obviously, like any messaging engine. Event-driven architecture deliveries. When I mentioned events, this is the infrastructure that allows your events, your business events, to be propagated. Um, some product examples, again, to give you a kind of a base of reference. Uh, Apache ActiveMQ is one, professional open source. JBoss Messaging is another good product. IBM WebSphereMQ and Tipco Messaging. These are some of the examples of message-oriented middleware that needs to be part of your SOA. Um, Enterprise Service Bus. So this is an often used word, ESB, Enterprise Service Bus. It's overloaded, you know, what is it? Uh, so very simply, it's the reliable integration backbone, right? It's, it provides intelligent routing and transformation of events and request reply data that sits really on top of your messaging, right? So it's extra intelligence that allows you to route data where it needs to go or transform data. Um, a lot of them come with adapters, right, in order for you to be able to hook into your existing legacy systems, right, because, again, this, the approach we want to take is really iterative, so we don't want to tear down our legacy infrastructure in one, one fell swoop. It just doesn't make sense. So a lot of the enterprise service bus components, products, come with adapters that can hook into your existing infrastructure and kind of create services right off the bat. Um, it's, it, it, it's very good about mimicking you know, various protocols and transports. So essentially it, makes, it can make mainframe system think that it communicates with mainframe when it invokes a service rather than XML or 